Good morning, church. Good morning. You guys awake? You guys want to stand to your feet? Who's excited to be here this morning? Yeah, let's see. Let's cut our hands here. I'm marching in battle, no doubt in my mind that my God is with me and victory is mine. I dance in the shadow of my enemy, cause God is my champion and he fights for me. Oh, God is my champion and he fights for me.
fountain where I ride, the fountain I drink from, oh, he is my son. Let the king of my heart be the shadow where I hide, the ransom for my life, oh, he is my son. Sing it out, you are good.
out of creation There at the start Before the beginning of time With no point of reference You spoke to the dark Blushed out the wonder of life As you speak, a hundred billion galaxies are born, and the vapor of your breath, the planets form. If the stars were made to worship, so will I. I could see your heart in it.
sure cut them out to your desire. You're the one who never leaves the one behind. Thank you, Father. You never leave us behind, God.
why forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. forgiveness was bought with the blood of Jesus. I thank you our forgiveness wasn't put on us to try to be good enough. It wasn't put on us to try to measure up because you saw that we couldn't do that. And you put it all on your son for us. I thank you just as we were singing the song, he's the one that never leaves a one behind. Father, I thank you that every one of us has an opportunity because of what Jesus did. Every one of us has what we have because Jesus chose not to leave one behind. I thank you that we all stand here today. No matter what reasoning we came, we all stand here today because Jesus chose not to leave one behind. He provided it all for us so that we could have right standing with you. We could have a relationship with you. We could have eternity in heaven with you because of what he did. Father, we thank you for that. Thank you for loving us enough to send your son for us. I thank you for loving us. I thank you for seeing past all of our issues, our sin, our hang-ups. us out. Father, I thank you for all that you've done for us, all that you're doing through us and in us. We count it a privilege to be a part of what you're doing. We thank you for loving us enough. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Amen. God is good to us. Amen. Amen. All right. I'll give you 60 seconds to turn around, shake hands with a couple people, introduce yourself to someone you may not know. Have a seat. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Rock Family Church this morning. It is good to see your faces. Uh, for those that are joining us online, it is good to have you with us as well. Um, you know, I, as I was kind of just, we were praying there and I made the comment about no matter how we got to church this morning, um, because you know, sometimes we come because we want to and sometimes we come because we feel like we're being drugged, right? Oh no, come on now. Y'all get quiet like, no, I'm here because I want to. Have you ever felt like you were being drugged to church? Maybe before you were all perfect and had it all together, right? <laughs> hey, that's the whole reason I went for the very first time, is just to get the person to shut up and stop it asking me to come. <laughs> just being honest, right? And here we are. <laughs> when God goes to work, he does some awesome things. But the cool thing is you're here because we've prayed for you. You're here on purpose. You know, we, uh, we gather every Sunday morning and we pray before uh, people start really coming in and showing up and arriving. Um, and we pray for people, for God to bring people in. Um, and maybe they don't even know the reason why, but he's just drawing them in by his spirit. So you're here on purpose. You're welcome. Same thing. You might be watching us online thinking the same thing. Why am I watching this church? Because we've been praying for you. 
because you've seen something in somebody else's life that you want. Amen? Amen. Because God is good to us. <clears throat> if it is your first time with us, or maybe you're just newer to Rock Family Church, when we dismiss this morning immediately after service, um, I'm going to head to the back of the auditorium. Just inside the auditorium here, you see a big sign that says Next Steps. Um, so come by there. Again, see me. Uh, give me an opportunity. Put a gift in your hand um, and just be able to meet you uh, because I can guarantee I don't get to meet everybody. And so it gives me an opportunity to do that and uh, just find out how we can better serve your family. Um, so we've got a, a thing coming up that we're starting called Growth Track. And uh, for those of you who are maybe not connected totally to Rock Family Church yet, uh, you've been coming for a while, but maybe you haven't gone through that. It's actually brand new. Um, you're saying, I'm, I've never heard of that. It's because we've never done it before. Um, it'll be the very first time. And so um, come by and uh, see me and I'll give you some more information on that. It's just an opportunity for us to help you to connect to this local body, um, help you to see what our heart is for you and to help you grow in your journey with God, and then give you an opportunity to plug in and serve here at Rock Family Church. You know, God has told us, he spoke to us that we are to raise the standard in this community. Um, and so we help people to raise the standard in their lives by helping you to connect, helping you to grow, and helping you to serve. And so stop by there, see me for that. Um, again, if, if you've not done that before um, and you are interested in that and just finding out some ways um, that we can help you to grow, stop by and sign up for that. It's a three-part class. It'll meet right after service for the very first three Sundays in November. Uh, we'll have lunch. doesn't take a whole lot of your time. Um, three parts because the first one is connect, the second one is grow, and the third one is serve. So um, get plugged in on that, and uh, we will see you there for that. Everybody say serve day. Serve Day is coming up this Saturday at the Agape House. Um, so they are already, I stopped by the other day and um, talked to the director and I, I told her, <laughs> I said, we, <laughs> we're coming um, on Saturday the 30th. We've got a team coming in to see you. <laughs> and she goes, you're darn right you do. And uh, she pulls out her phone and she's like, I've got you already on my calendar. Um, so um, I was talking to her and she was saying that they um, are ridiculously short and uh, some muscle power right now and uh, getting some things done. And so they are desperately needing some assistance. And so she's super excited to have us. We had a great turnout last month. And uh, so I encourage you to come and be a part of that. It's from nine until 12 this Saturday morning. And uh, if you can come for half an hour, great. If you can come for all three hours, great. Um, but come and just be a blessing. It's an opportunity for us to serve our community as well. Um, and so we volunteer there. So come and be a part of that, lots of fun. And then next Sunday, we have Trunk or Treat. And uh, that'll be right outside on the parking lot. So it'll be a lot of fun. Um, I know we have a lot of people have already signed up to decorate your trunk or to work a game. If you're interested in doing either of those, we have the supplies for the game. So don't like think you've got to do that all on your own. Um, we have the, all the stuff. You just get to operate it. Um, but um, sign up at Rock Central on your way out today if you'd like to do either of those. Um, the kids will get to trunk or treat, obviously, around all the vehicles. We'll have games for them to play. We're going to have face painting. We're going to have some inflatables for the little ones. And we're going to have free food. Now we're excited, right? <laughs> Get in my belly, right? So we'll have hot dogs and chips and drinks and all that kind of fun stuff. So hang out next Sunday after service for a little bit, if for nothing else, just to grab a free lunch. Um, but it'll be a lot of fun. It'll be right out on the parking lot, and uh, it's going to be a good time. Who's ready to give today? <clears throat> Amen. One thing that I so appreciate about you all is your generosity um, in seeing to it that things get done. Um, and I, I so appreciate that. Um, I shared... Um, about our missionaries last week that are in Thailand and Burma and now down in Brazil and uh, just some of the things that are happening there and um, a home that they're getting ready to open up in Brazil that will be a refuge to 300 at-risk kids per week. And uh, so you all are a part of that. And so I just appreciate that. Again, we're still giving extra to all of our missionaries every month right now, helping them out. Um, you know, our missionaries down in Guatemala, they are still completely shut down. Um, nothing is allowed to happen right now. And, uh, you know, they're working to get us on the uh, calendar for next summer for the third try. <laughs> We've had to postpone every year. Um, and so they're, they're hopeful that next summer that at least things will open back up. And uh, as it has stood right now, just to get into the country, it's an automatic 14-day quarantine period in a hospital. And we're only going to be there for five days. So what's the point, right? Um, and so... Yeah, nothing's open. So anyway, we're uh, helping them to serve people in their country that can't get things right now. Amen. Um, we're helping out in uh, Uganda um, and several other countries around the world as well. And so you're a part of that. Every time you give 
20 plus percent goes right back out the door to help ministries and missionaries all around the world do what God has called them to do. So thank you for your giving, all right, just so that you know um, what's happening with your money. So um, let's go ahead and pray over that. Uh, you've got multiple ways that you can give. You see that up on the monitor, so just use whichever one works best for you. And uh, let's pray. Father, we thank you today for the opportunity that we have to give. We thank you that we get to be a part of lives being changed and impacted all over the world each week through our giving. And Father, I thank you that uh, as we give, as we do what you've put in our hearts to do, that you see to it that all of our needs are met. You said in your word in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, that not only would you meet our needs, but you would give us extra that we can be a blessing to others. And so, Father, I thank you for that. I thank you that what we see as a subtraction, you see as multiplication, and you allow us to do even more than what we ever dreamt possible. So I thank you that as we give today, that you take it, you multiply it, you, you make it go farther, you stretch it and make it do things that we can't even imagine. And uh, I just thank you again that we get to be a part of that. And uh, we, again, we just do it because we love you. We want to be a part of what you're doing. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Good stuff. Um, I am uh, excited for today. Um, I know many of you are here um, excited as well because we get to do baby dedications today. So we're going to do that here in just a minute. Um, I want to share some things first, and then we're going to bring the little ones up, or we'll have the little ones bring their families up with them, and uh, we'll... Uh, Get to have some fun with them. So um, super exciting. Um, I, I, it's one of my favorite things to do every year is baby dedications um, because they're just so cute. Um, but it's also, it's such a vital part of who we are as a church. Um, you know, because babies aren't just, you know, well, go put them in the nursery and somebody babysit them so that we're not bothered during service. That's not what it's about, right? There's a call on their lives. There's an assignment that's there. And so from the very time of being in the nursery in the toddler class, you know, we want to pour into them. We want to, we want to encourage them. We want to see the plan that God has for them come to fruition. And uh, so we, we, we pour into them. We do things um, on purpose, not just so that we don't get bothered by them in service, right? Um, there, there's, there's a purpose behind it. And so um, I, I want to share just a couple of things. And uh, like I said, we'll bring the, the families up and the little ones up and uh, we'll have some fun. Little funny story that uh, I want to kick off with today. After two years of marriage, a husband came home from work and walked in the front door. His wife greeted him at the front door with a hug and a kiss. She said, honey, I have some big news. He said, oh, what's that? She said, well, in a little while, there will no longer be just the two of us. There's an addition coming to our family. Bless you. He said, are you serious? You have made me the happiest man in the world. And she said, well, I'm so glad to hear that because the week after next, my mother's moving in. <clears throat> not exactly what he had in mind, right? I mean, I, I, I still remember when Kelly first told me, or how she told me, I should say, because she didn't, wasn't out of uh, the words out of her mouth, but how she told me that, um, you know, she was pregnant for the first time. And, uh, you know, when, when that's something that you're trusting God for, um, especially when it's not happening and it's taking a while, um, that's super, it's intense, and so when, when you find out that you're going to have a little one coming into your family, um, and for some families, it's just because you're adopting as well. It, it's not even because of, of a natural thing, but because you're choosing to bring another one into your family. But when you know there's an addition coming to your family, it's an exciting time. It's also pretty frightening because you now understand this little one is my responsibility, right? This little one is now in my charge to have to um, look out for and make sure that they're provided for and taken care of and all the questions, right? All the unknowns, um, all the woulda, shoulda, couldas. You know, I, I, um, I remember when Jace was born, he was born four weeks early and um, before we ever even left the hospital, I was changing his diaper and he started gagging and nobody was around to help. And so the first thing is just like, oh dear God, like, what do I do? You know? And so I rolled him over onto a side real quick and started patting him on the back and he starts coughing up all this gunk. Right. And so the nurse comes in later and I'm thinking like my blood pressure's up here right now because you weren't around to help me. Right. And uh, she's like, oh, you did all the right stuff. You did a good job. And so then they say, okay, we're going to send you home. <laughs> right. Parents, you've been there, right? It's easy right? When you're in the hospital, because they do everything. As soon as you walk out that door, you realize it's now on me, right? We pull out of the hospital parking lot to come home. We were in Washington 
and we pull out of the parking lot and we did not even get a quarter like down the block to the next stoplight and he starts gagging in the back in his car seat. Instant panic, right? I'm trying as fast as I can to run the red light to be able to turn off onto a road to jump back there. I jump in the back seat and I'm like, I'm bailing out. Kelly had had a C-section, emergency C-section, so she's slowly getting out of the car. And I jump in the back seat and I'm, you know, he's gagging and I'm trying to get him out of his car seat. I get him out of his car seat and I pick him up and he looks at me and he burps and smiles. And I thought, and so it begins. Right? All of these questions. Liam, born six and a half weeks early, comes home with a heart monitor. I'm sure many of you have experienced all these different things with your kids. And, um, you know, they teach you how to work this heart monitor. And if it goes off, what you need to do to, for your kid, and I'm thinking, don't you just need to keep him here? Like, oh, no, you'll be able to do it. It's just fine. So they send us home. We've got this heart monitor we've got to take with us everywhere because it's attached to him. And, uh, you know, so he's laying there. We go to bed the very first night. We've never heard this thing go off before, Right. It goes off in the middle of the night. It literally sounds like a tornado siren in your bedroom. I mean, I come tearing up out of bed, you know, because, I mean, you're instantly just thinking, what's wrong, you know, right? And I go running around the bed, and I get over there, and all he did, he stretches, he yawns, he rolls over, and it turns off. And I thought, are you kidding me? Like, both of them, like, very first day we bring him home, and you've got all these just, like, questions, right? And I have to, I have to know the answers, and Here's the thing that you quickly realize. There's no such thing as a perfect parent, right? You, you aren't, you're not gonna have all the answers all the time, and that's okay, right? You're gonna figure some things out as you go. Um, there was a, a guy that used to, that he would travel, and uh, he would speak on, you know, having kids and raising kids, because we always think as kids, and as growing up, young adults, you always think, man, I'm gonna be the perfect parent, right? I mean, you, you walk past the parent, in Walmart and the kid's screaming, and you're like, my kid will never do that. <laughs> and then you're the parent with the screaming kid. <laughs> Actually, just this last week was at Walmart, and this lady, I could hear her in the very back of the store. Her kid was screaming, screaming, bloody murder. And she comes rolling up the aisle, and I mean, he is just screaming. And I, made, I looked up, and I made eye contact with her, and I just smiled. And she's like, I am so sorry. This is so embarrassing. We are out of here. And I said, it's okay. I get it. I'm like, I got two of them. Like, I know, I get it. You know, it's, you, you think, oh, my kid will never do that. And then your kid does that. So this guy, he, uh, he's a traveling speaker. And he said this, he said, before my wife and I had kids, I traveled all over the country and I would speak on this, this issue. I titled it the 10 commandments for raising perfect kids. Notice he doesn't have kids yet. He said, then I had a kid and I changed my talk to 10 hints for parents. He said, and then I had my second kid and I changed my talk to tentative suggestions for fellow strugglers. He said, I mean, that's just the way it goes, right? He said, when I had my third kid, I quit talking about parenting altogether. No perfect parents, but we do have a perfect father. Amen. And he wants to help us raise our children. Psalm 127 verse three says this, children are a gift from the Lord. They are a reward from him. The message translation actually says God's best gift. The Lord gives us many gifts in life. Not all of them are kids, but he gives us many gifts in life. And he wants us to steward those gifts well, right? And it's no different with our kids. He wants us to steward our kids well. Dedicating ourselves and our children to the Lord is a great first step with this gift that he's given you. Recognizing they belong to him and he has released them to us, into our care to raise them well is so incredibly vital. Proverbs 22, verse 6 says, Direct your children unto the right path, and when they are older, they will not leave it. And Jeremiah 29, 11 says, For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not for disaster, to give you a future and a hope. He gives you a gift, and he says, I've got plans for this gift. I want to do some amazing things with this gift. And I'm entrusting you to lead them into that. I'm trusting you to take them there. Now, here's the thing. There are going to be so many monkey wrenches thrown at you in that journey. Things are going to happen. 
totally knock you off guard. And the thing ultimately is, just remember, this is God's gift given to me. And I'm going to steward this gift, right? I'm to the best of my ability. I'm going to raise this child to follow after God. Amen? Amen. And so today when we do baby dedications, that's what this is all about. It's about us as parents dedicating our little ones to the Lord, but really dedicating ourselves to steward this gift well. And baby dedications are also about us as a church dedicating ourselves to steward this gift well. Because again, when they get checked into the nursery or into the toddler class or the preschool class or the elementary class, it's not just something to do to bide our time so that we don't get disrupted by all the little noises. That's ministry happening to them because they're a gift. And we want to steward that gift well. Amen? Amen. So I'm going to have our little ones come on up. I've got Miss Tesha right up here. Mom said she knew something was going on this morning because she was getting all dressed up, but she just didn't know what. Um, so Tesha's coming up with, with her family, and we've got Gunner. He's going to come up with his family. You can bring up whoever you want to bring up. Come on up on here. <laughs> and you all can come up right here. Big sister's got to come too, right? All right. So I'm going to read to you from Deuteronomy chapter 6 here as we get started. It says this, And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart, and thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children, and shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. Now what we're going to do here today is I'm going to talk to the families that are up here, and then I'm going to take an opportunity to talk to you all as well, because it's a commitment on all parts, all right? So we're going to start talking to the families and the parents today. Parents, through your children, you pass on everything you are and everything you have to offer humanity. What's up, big guy? That's how God made his ultimate covenant with mankind through his son. Each generation has the responsibility to instill within the next generation a reverence for God and the knowledge of his word. In this way, God can build on basic truths, right living, loving God, and our fellow man to reveal himself more fully to each generation. As you dedicate your child to the Lord, you are actually dedicating yourselves as parents to help your child mature and fulfill his or her divine destiny. As Hannah presented Samuel and Joseph and Mary presented the baby Jesus, so you also present your child to dedicate him or her to the Lord. I'm going to read some statements here, questions. And as I read them, when I'm finished, just it's almost like we're getting married, right? You're going to say, we will, all right? Will you train up your child in the way that he or she should go? Will you show your child the God kind of love? Will you raise your child in the training and instruction of the Lord, not provoking him or her to wrath? <laughs> Will you teach your child the principles of the word of God and show him or her the value of those principles? And will you be an example to your child of how to live victoriously through the promises contained in God's word? They're so attentive. Awesome. All right, church, would you please stand up? The parents are not alone in the desire to raise their children in the right way and in the right atmosphere. As their extended church family, we have a responsibility to help. Please answer amen to the following statements as we commit to help these parents raise their child in the fear and admonition of the Lord. We will provide godly examples for the child through our words, actions, and lifestyles. Amen. amen. By supporting the nursery, children's, and youth programs, we will help meet the child's needs spiritually, socially, physically, mentally, and emotionally. We will encourage the child to reach his and her full potential in fulfilling his and her divine destiny. We will support the parents and the child, most importantly, in prayer. Amen. Amen. We're going to pray a general prayer, and then we're going to pray for each of them individually. He's excited. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, and you guys, I'll, you don't have to repeat it. It's all good. <laughs> Heavenly Father, thank you. For these little ones that we have here today, 
whom these parents now dedicate to your service. In the presence of this local body, they also dedicate themselves to train up their children in the way that he and she should go to fulfill their divine purpose. As they grow physically and spiritually, may your goodness and mercy follow them all the days of their lives. May the parents be continually guided by the wisdom of your Holy Spirit, and may this congregation be a source of strength and encouragement to each of these children and their family. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. All right, now we're going to pray for them individually as well. Can I have your hands? Oh, you want to hold my hands? Huh? What do you think? Oh, you want to come to me? Come here. You going to slobber all over me? Please do. You going to slobber all over me. All right. Well, Father, we thank you for Gunner. And we thank you for the assignment that you have for his life. We thank you that as we read in Jeremiah 29, 11, that you have a great assignment for him. You have plans to do amazing things in his life. And I thank you that um, as his parents have dedicated themselves to help see that come to pass, we as a church do the same thing. And so, Lord, I just thank you for using us in any way possible to see to it that all of those things come to pass in his life and that he walks in every blessing and assignment and everything that you have for him. We call him blessed from the top of his head to the soles of his feet. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Good job, kiddo. Look at you. All right, Miss Tasha. You want to come to you? She's like, ah, I'm not so sure. No? Come here. Come here. Oh, there we go. There we go. Look at you. What do you think, huh? They're right there. Here. Here. We'll step back here. How about that? All right, let's, let's pray for Miss Tesha. She's like, she wants the balloons, wants the balloons of course. <laughs> All right, well, let's pray for her. Father, we thank you for Tesha. We thank you again that as her family has come today to dedicate themselves and her to you, we dedicate ourselves to helping as well. We thank you for the assignment that you have for her again, according to Jeremiah 29, 11. We thank you for the plans that you have for her. We thank you for the gifts and the talents and the callings that are on the inside of her and that they will come to pass and they will come out. I thank you, Lord, for using us in any way possible again to help see to it that she fulfills the assignment and does all of the things that you have for her. And I thank you, Lord, for using us as a church family to be a blessing to this family. And I thank you that she too is blessed from the top of her head all the way down to the bottoms of those little toes. And we thank you for the assignment that you have for her and Gunner. And we thank you that we get to be a part of it and we get to see it come to pass. There's that smile. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 All right, well, we have a gift for each of these little ones. Ladies first, there you are. There you are. Mr. Gunner. He's like, I got a gift now. He's all excited. All right, well, you all can be seated. I'll let you all go ahead and go back down as well. Go ahead, my dear. <coughs> Love it. So as I shared before, you know, it's, it's a commitment on our part to help these parents in raising their kid. Again, parents, you understand how much you need the help and the support and the prayers of others when it comes to raising little ones. Um, you know, and part of being a part of the body is that the body takes care, right? Um, if, if you have an injury or a wound or something happens to one part of your body, the whole body goes to work, right? And so it's the same thing. We as a body, we all work together. We're, you know, they always say it takes a village to raise a child, right? We are that village, correct? Um, and so we're there to be that support to the little ones and to their families. Amen? Amen. Amen. Go ahead and stand up. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for today. I thank you for the opportunity that we have to dedicate these little ones and their families to you. And uh, Lord, I, again, I'm, I'm so excited just to see them grow and to see what you're going to do in their lives. I thank you for the little ones all the way from the nursery, all the way on up to the oldest person in the house, that your desire is that they would grow. And I thank you for using us as a church body to help them to grow. I thank you for using us to be a blessing to them. I thank you for using us to pour encouragement and love every step of the way in their journey. And Lord, I just thank you that we get to be a part of it. I thank you again that, you know, you, you look past all of our stuff and you see the assignment that you've put on the inside of us. You see the, the blessing that's on the inside of us that we have when we connect to a local body and we be there for one another. And so Lord, I thank you that um, we get to be a part of this journey. Lord, we love you. We thank you for all that you're doing in our lives. And again, just thank you so much for sending Jesus for us that we could have a relationship with you. 
and it's in his name that we pray. Amen. Um, thank you, sir. If uh, I, I want to ask this too before we dismiss, you know, obviously we got to dedicate the, um, the little ones and I got to dedicate their, their families to the Lord today. And that's a commitment on our part. And so here's what I want to do. I want to make sure, I want to ask you, um, I, I want to know that you have an opportunity to have a relationship with the Father as well. You know, because again, dedicating ourselves to help raise these little ones according to the word of God means that we have a relationship there as well, right? And uh, so I want to make sure that you have that. And so if you're here today and you say, you know what, I don't have a relationship with God. Um, I don't know him personally. Um, you know, that's, that's not something I've had in my life, but I want that. You know, I want to be a part of being a godly counsel, you know, to these little ones and, and to the, you know, all the kids in the church and, and just being a part of that. Um, if that's you today, I, I just want to ask you this. Um, if you're here and you say, you know what, that's me. Would you pray for me today? I'm just going to ask you to lift your hand because here's the thing. We want to celebrate with you. Um, you know, the Bible says that's the greatest decision that you'll ever make. And when you make that decision to walk into a relationship with God, it says that all heaven celebrates with you. And so we want to do that. We want to celebrate with you today in that. So if that's you, I'm just going to ask you to lift your hand because we want to pray with you today. We're not doing it to call you out. We're not doing it to embarrass you. We're doing it to bring you into the greatest relationship you'll ever have. Um, and if you're watching online and you say, that's me, I don't have that relationship, just in the comments, let us know that, hey, that's me. I want to pray that prayer um, because we want to pray that with you. Um, so is there anybody in here today that you don't have a relationship with God and you say, that's me. I want to, I want to know him. Just lift your hand. If not, I totally understand um, because you already have that relationship. Amen. Um, so let's do this. Let's go ahead and celebrate the fact that everybody has that relationship with the Father. You know, again, I, I know it's a little different, but if heaven's going to celebrate, then I want to celebrate too, right? Um, and so um, I I'm just excited that everyone in here already knows the Lord and that you have that relationship with him because ultimately that's the most important thing because when you step off this planet and you go off into eternity, your relationship is what determines everything, right? Um, and so it's important that we have that. So um, we're going to do this though for those that are watching online um, and maybe say, hey, that's me today. Uh, like I want to pray. We're going to pray along with them today. So just repeat after me. Heavenly Father, thank you for sending Jesus for me. I ask you to forgive me of my sin. And I thank you that you have a plan for me to prosper me, to bless me, and to do amazing things. Thank you for surrounding me with godly wisdom, godly friends, and people who will point me in your direction. I thank you for welcoming me, welcoming me into your family. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right. So here's another thing too. If maybe you were like, ah, I'm not real comfortable raising my hand, but you just prayed, come let me know. All right. Again, I'm going to be right back there at the next steps. Come let me know that you prayed that for the first time. And again, if you're watching online, let us know if you prayed that for the first time, because our goal is to what? Help you connect, right? But then also help you to grow. All right. So um, let us help you to do that. Um, again, if it's your first time or you're newer to Rock Family and you're wanting to connect, you're wanting to plug in, come right back there. Again, you see the big sign on the back wall of the auditorium that says Next Steps. Meet me at that table. Give me an opportunity to just shake your hand, get to meet you, and uh, kind of show you what we've got going on, all right? Um, don't forget, also, if you want to be a part of the Trunk Retreat next Sunday, um, it's coming up quick already. It's crazy to think October is going to be over. Um, but if you'd like to be a part of that, make sure you stop by Rock Central on your way out and sign up for that. If you're giving today and you want to give in person, you can stop by Rock Central to drop that off there in the giving as well. All right. Otherwise, have a great week. We love you guys and we'll see you next time.